My name is Rick Renner, and today I'm with this big flock of sheep not far from my house in Moscow, Russia. Denise and I really live not far from this place. This is Russia. And I'm thinking about the 23rd Psalm where the Bible says, the Lord is my shepherd and he is your shepherd. And one of the things he does is anoint our head with oil. In fact, Psalm 23, verse five says, thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. My friends, God wants to give you and me a supernatural anointing. And that is what I'm going to talk to you about today. This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Welcome to today's program. I am so glad to see you. I feel like I can just look right through that camera and see you sitting there, you and me, sitting together around the Word of God, and Jesus is with us. Jesus promised that if two or three of you would be gathered together, I'll be there in the midst. He never said we had to be in the same room. He just said we had to be together. Well, we're together, and Jesus is here with us, and so is the Holy Spirit. And today, the Holy Spirit is going to teach us about the anointing and a supernatural promise of the anointing is promised in the 23rd Psalm. Wow, it is so powerful. But hey, I want you to order my entire series, which is called Psalm 23, The Lord is My Shepherd. It is 10 parts. These programs are so full. And I have to tell you the truth. I have really been fed by this teaching. It has been so thrilling to see the 10 promises that God makes to all of His people. And that's why I want you to order this amazing series that comes with a study guide. My team and I work so hard on these study guides because we want to lay a banquet table in front of you and make it easy for you to ingest these truths from the Bible. And when you read it, while you see it, or while you hear it, it really reinforces the teaching down deep inside you. You can order these right now by going online or by giving us a call. And right now we're also offering you a book by my friend, Tony Cook. It's a small book, but it's a really powerful book. It's small enough that you can put it in your jacket or you can put it in your purse, read it while you're on the way somewhere. And the name of the book is called Because the Lord is My Shepherd, The Blessings of an empowered life, and it covers the promises of God to you in the 23rd Psalm. And when you become a partner with our ministry, and by the way, becoming a partner is such a holy act. This is very, very serious because when you become a partner, you are doing something by faith to change someone else's life. And we all need to be doing something to change somebody else's life. We need to get our minds off of ourselves and begin to think about what we can do to help fulfill the Great Commission. Go into all the world and teach all nations. That's what we're doing. And when you financially give to our ministry and become a financial partner, we send you Denise's book called The Gift of Forgiveness as our way of saying welcome to our partner family. And we also send you my book, which is called Life in the Combat Zone. This book is dedicated to our partners. The subtitle says, How to Survive, Thrive, and Overcome in the Midst of Any Difficult Situation. And I have to remind you that from now until October, at a very radical discount on our website, we're offering autobiography. Look at this. It is amazing. The cover shows me and Denise on Red Square. Who would ever imagine that Denise and I and our family would have moved to the capital of Russia? This is our home. It's also unlikely. And that's why we call our autobiography Unlikely. The subtitle says, Our Faith-Filled Journey to the Ends of the Earth. And if you want your own unlikely journey, I want to advise you to order this book. It's not just filled with our story. It is filled with teaching from the Word of God. It's an autobiography like none you've ever seen before. And please remember that if you need prayer, we are waiting to hear from you right now. If you'll give us a call, 
or if you'll send us an email, the moment our team hears from you, they and we are going to begin to really pray for you. But reach for your Bible. And today I want us to return to the 23rd Psalm. And I'm going to read again verse 1. And in verse 1, David says, the Lord is my shepherd. Just say that. Personalize it. Say, the Lord is my shepherd. David didn't say the Lord is their shepherd or the Lord is a shepherd. He said the Lord is my shepherd. We need to personalize all the promises in this chapter. David said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Verse 2, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. Verse 3, he restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Verse 4, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff they comfort me. Verse 5, thou preparest a table before me, even in the presence of mine enemies. And yesterday I covered all the enemy and adversary and foe verses in the book of Psalms. David had seen so many enemies in his life, but even in the presence of enemies, he learned God would set a table for him. And God will do that for you too, but you have to keep your eyes open to see the table. But then he goes on in verse 5 and says, Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runs over. That's what we're going to see today. And tomorrow we're going to conclude with verse 6, where David says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And in these verses we find 10 promises. Number one, God's supernatural provision. Number two, God's supernatural protection. Number three, God's supernatural peace. Number four, God's supernatural restoration. Number five, God's supernatural guidance that he gives to every believer. Number six, God's supernatural confidence that he gives to us. Number seven, God's supernatural loving correction. Number eight, God's supernatural prosperity or promise to meet all of our needs. Number eight, which we're going to see today, God's supernatural anointing and blessing in our life. And finally, number 10, God's supernatural promise. But hey, look at verse five where David says, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Now notice, thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runs over. If your Bible is open and you have an ink pen or a pencil, either underline or circle that word anointest. What does it mean to be anointed? The word anoint means to rub or to smear with oil, and it was an act used for setting something apart for a special, divine, or very important task. Specifically, oil was used for anointing kings, even anointing prophets, anointing anyone who is being ordained into a powerful, powerful position. And David knew something about the anointing because David had been anointed on three occasions. David experienced three anointings. And my friends, I want to tell you that you can grow in the anointing. David was anointed once, then he was anointed again, he was anointed a third time, and there was a lapse of time between each of those anointings. But with each anointing, his authority became greater and greater and greater. David's first anointing was in the presence of his brothers. And we read about that in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 13, where the Bible says, Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. David was first anointed in a small environment in the sight of just a few eyes, the eyes of his brethren who saw the Spirit of God come upon him and his brothers and those who were in close contact saw that he had been anointed. But then a day came when others began to recognize the Spirit of God was upon him. And we read about this in 2 Samuel chapter 2, verse 4, where David received a second anointing. And with the second anointing, his authority grew. The Bible tells us in 2 Samuel 2, verse 4, And the men of Judah came, 
And there they anointed David king over the house of Judah. So now Judah has recognized his authority and they have anointed him. But finally, David has a third anointing in the presence of all of Israel. And this is recorded in 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 3, where the Bible says, So all the elders of Israel came to the king to Hebron. And King David made a league with them in Hebron before the Lord. And they anointed David king over Israel. He first was anointed in the presence of his brethren. Then he received a second anointing, which gave him a greater sphere of influence. Finally, he received a third anointing, which caused all of Israel to recognize him as king. And in the story of David, we find that God gives anointings one piece at a time, one phase at a time. And by the way, this is confirmed in 2 Corinthians Chapter 1, verse 21, a marvelous verse that says, Now he which established us with you in Christ and hath anointed us is God. But notice in this verse what comes first, the establishing or the anointing. We'll look at it again. He that established us with you in Christ and hath anointed us is God. Before God gives the greater anointings first, he sees that we're established and we're faithful with the early anointings. That is what we see in the life of David. And you may be very eager to get started on whatever it is that God has called you to do, but you need to know that God is very focused on things like character. God is interested in your integrity. God is interested in your faithfulness. God is interested in purity of heart. He is more interested in all of those things than he is about doing something in a hurry. God has plenty of time. His eyes are not fixed on the calendar. God's eyes are on you. And if you are ready for a greater anointing. Wow. Maybe you've heard the phrase in the past, don't get the cart before the horse. So many people have tried to get the cart before the horse, but my friends, God never gets the cart before the horse. The principle is very, very clear in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21. Now he which established us with you in Christ and hath anointed us as God, the establishment comes first. What does that mean when the Bible says he that established us? The word established is the Greek word be bio, a wonderful word which describes something that is firm, durable, dependable, or reliable. And this very term was used to depict the lengthy and intensive investigative process involved to validate if a document was trustworthy and could be relied upon. Paul says that God wants to establish us before he gives us the greater anointings. That is, God wants to make us firm in faith, durable to withstand any condition we face in life. He wants to make us steadfast, trustworthy, dependable, reliable. We have to have these traits before God will take us into the next level of the anointing that we desire. It takes firmness to stand for God. Anyone who's going to be a leader has to have durability to resist difficult and painful times. God has to be absolutely sure that you are a person on whom he can rely before he takes you into the next anointing that you're dreaming for. God is very good at due diligence. Recently in our ministry, we've been acquiring something that required a lot of research. We did our due diligence before we put our stamp of approval on the document and signed the contract, first we did everything we could to find out if everything was good in the company that we were purchasing. Is this really something that is reliable? Is everything all right? And that is what God does with us. This word established, again, could depict the legal term used to depict the lengthy and investigative in process involved to validate if a document was trustworthy. In the ancient world, documents were written by hand. If those writing the documents were not careful, mistakes could be made and those mistakes could carry great legal consequences. And because of that, it was not wise to put your stamp of approval or your signature to a document until first you tested the document to find out if it was proven to be 
trustworthy. That is what this word established means. And if the document was found to be trustworthy, then you could sign the deal. If the document had errors in it, the errors had to be corrected before the deal could be finalized. And Paul says, this is what God does with all of us before he takes us from one realm of the anointing into another realm of the anointing. In 2 Corinthians 1.21, it says, Now he that established us with you in Christ, he that has made us firm, durable, dependable, reliable, the one that has thoroughly checked us out and done due diligence to find out if we are reliable, trustworthy, if we can really be depended upon. And when we've passed that test, Paul says, then he anoints us. He takes us into the next level of the anointing. The word anointed is a translation of the Greek word creo. And oh, this is so very important. The word creo again means to rub, to bathe. It can even mean to massage with oil. In most cases, it depicts the anointing of the oil of the Holy Spirit. But in the Old Testament and even in New Testament times, when a person was anointed with oil by a prophet, by a priest, by a doctor or by a therapist, the person anointing would put the oil on his own hands. He wouldn't just take a bottle of oil and turn it upside down and just pour the oil all over the individual. Of course not. Oil was extremely expensive. And in fact, it was so expensive that the anointer would take the oil and would put it on his own hands. Then he would turn his hands downward and would begin to apply the oil to the individual. He would rub it into their head into their hair. If he was a therapist, he might massage the per person with the oil. But the point is, the oil was not just randomly spilled out on a person. The oil could only be applied by hands. Oh, this is so important. Which means the anointing is a hands-on experience. If a person is anointed, it means God has laid his hands on him. That is what an anointed person is. It is an individual that has the hand of God on his life. And, oh, please listen. Hands, once they were publicly laid on an individual in the Old Testament and even in New Testament times, it was taken to be as an endorsement or an approval of that individual. For example, when elected officials were stalled into office, the senior body of politicians publicly laid hands on that individual as a way of declaring that he was officially endorsed and therefore empowered to do the job. In the New Testament, we find the laying on of hands used in the very same way. When hands are laid on an individual, it expresses support, it expresses endorsement, and it means the anointing of God has come upon that individual. Now, we find in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21, that before God lays his hands on a person and gives them a greater anointing, first he tests them to see if they're ready for that greater anointing. God doesn't quickly lay hands on anyone, and God honors the anointing so much that God is very careful before he lays his hands upon an individual to take them from one level of anointing to the next. David proved himself faithful, and that is why he had the first anointing that led to the second anointing. And when he passed the test there, it took him to the third anointing. God is always looking to see if we're ready for the next dose of the anointing of God. But in the 23rd Psalm, verse 5, David also says, Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runs over. What in the world does that mean? Well, in the ancient world, when you came into a person's home, if they wanted to royally and lavishly welcome you into their home, they would pour oil on your head. And if they really, really, really wanted to lavishly welcome you, they would literally pour and pour and pour oil until you felt that your cup was running over. And by using this phrase, my cup runneth over, 
David is saying God has lavishly welcomed us into the family. God is so excited that we are sheep among his flock, that God has royally poured his oil out upon us. He's extended his love. He's extended his anointing. He has extended his blessing to us. And our cup runs over. Wow. One man says, I like this. The pessimist says, my cup is half empty. The optimist says, my cup is half full. But the believer can say, my cup is running over. That is how much God has welcomed us into his flock. And David was a man who had experienced the anointing of God in his life, and he knew he had been welcomed by the Father into the flock. And David said, you anoint my head with oil. He knew what it was to have the hand of God on his life. He said, my cup runs over because he knew he had been lavishly welcomed into the family of God. And my friends, we all have the anointing. We know that because of 1 John chapter 2, verse 20, which says, you have an anointing from the Holy One. But if you want to be promoted into the next level of the anointing, God has to find you trustworthy with a level that you have right now. And like David, you can go from one realm to another realm to another realm. David had three anointings and David said, he has anointed my head with oil and he has lavishly welcomed me into his house, my cup, runs over. And my friends, all of those are promises for you as well. I'll be back in just a moment and I want to pray for you. The 23rd Psalm is a favorite passage of scripture for many people and cherished by Christians all over the world. In this new 10 part series, Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. Rick Renner opens this powerful passage like you've never heard it before so you can understand all the amazing promises that God makes to you in the 23rd Psalm. The Lord really is your shepherd, and He wants to lovingly take care of you. In this 10-part series, Rick will unfold for you God's provision and protection, God's peace and restoration, God's guidance and prosperity, God's anointing and promises, and so much more. Rick Renner says, this is one of my favorite series. Anyone who loves Psalm 23 will love it more than ever after hearing this fully expounded teaching. This remarkable series is available in digital or physical format starting at just $20. In addition, we're also offering you the book, Because the Lord is My Shepherd, The 12 Blessings of an Empowered Life. God wants you to experience all the promises in His Word. And in this easy to read book, you'll find 12 blessings that God promises you in the 23rd Psalm. This powerful book can be yours for just $7. Don't miss this special offer of the 10 part series, Psalm 23, The Lord is My Shepherd, and the book, Because the Lord is My Shepherd, The 12 Blessings of an Empowered Life. Call the number on your screen now, or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. We get many calls for prayer uh, on a daily basis. Um, you know, there are people just really wanting answers today. They want hope, um, and we're here for them uh, to help them find that. Uh, we get calls for prayer just when people are struggling, going through certain situations, uh, and they may start with being very hopeless, but many times they hang up uh, full of hope, uh, full of joy, faith, and uh, just trusting in the Lord. And uh, the most rewarding part is you know, getting the phone call the day after saying God, you know, has come through and answered their prayers. And uh, it's just super humbling and I'm grateful uh, to be working for Enter Ministries. Well, everybody who watches Rick on TV is going to want to have a study guide every time. It's, um, first of all, a tangible memory of the material. and. Anybody who is desiring to learn the Bible more, which we see every day all over the world, it is easy and uh, affordable to get a study guide. And I know a lot of people just do it every single time or they download as they're watching the program for free. And so it's a, just a wonderful tool. 
As far as the needs of the ministry, we are bursting at the seams and growing by leaps and bounds. I foresee more, definitely more growth. And um, as far as people connecting with the Renner ministry and the more that uh, Rick and Denise and Joel and everyone gets to be um, exposed to other areas of the world and other people uh, that are connecting with the Renner ministry, uh, we're just, we're bursting at the seams. My friend, it is so exciting to see the lives that are being touched by the teaching of the Bible. Our ministry is exploding and we really need your help. So I'm asking you today to please pray about becoming a part of the giving team for our ministry expansion project. Today, I established the fact that you can't get the cart before the horse. You've got to pass the level where you are right now before you can receive the next level of anointing. And God has oil on his hands and he's wanting to apply the next level of the anointing to your life, but he's waiting for you to pass the test where you are right now. Oh, this teaching today is so helpful. I wish someone had taught it to me when I was much younger in life. But I'm offering you my brand new series called Psalm 23rd, The Lord is My Shepherd. He is your shepherd and he makes 10 promises to you that you need to know. And this series comes with a marvelous study guide. The two of these together are so powerful. And we're also offering you Tony Cook's book called Because the Lord is My Shepherd. And I remind you that when you become a partner with our ministry, we'll send you Denise's book, The Gift of Forgiveness, and my book, Life in the Combat Zone, as our way of saying welcome to our partner family. And right now on our website store, we're offering you at a very special special discount autobiography, which is called Unlikely, Our Faith-Filled Journey to the Ends of the Earth. The back of the book says, if you're ready to read a true life story that will stir your faith to launch out and experience your own unlikely adventure, this is the book for you to read. But let me pray for you, Father. Oh, Lord, we all want more. We want more blessing. We want more anointing. So we ask you, Lord, to help us prove ourselves to be faithful where we are so we qualify for the next level of the anointing. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. It's been so good. But we'll be back tomorrow. We're going to pick up right here. But remember Ecclesiastes 8.4. It says, where the word of a king is, there is power. Renner Ministries is proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ through every available media to the uttermost parts of the earth. Discover the many ways you can help us make a difference in lives around the world with the Word of God. We invite you to partner with us in teaching, strengthening, and rescuing lives for the glory of God. Together, we can make a difference that will last throughout eternity. This program was made possible by the giving of the God-called partners of Renner Ministries.